Three Angels Broadcasting Network is pleased to bring you Something Better, a faith-inspiring picture of a loving God from the book of Hebrews. Welcome to 3ABN's virtual homecoming camp meeting. Amen. Welcome back to 3ABN fall homecoming camp meeting. Were you blessed by Pastor John's sermon just a couple of minutes ago? I can hear you at home saying amen. I know we have been here at 3ABN. What a blessing to be able to participate with you. You know, you're part of our family at home. And thank you again for your prayers and financial support for your ministry, for God's ministry, as it reaches the world with the message of truth. This hour, we're going to be blessed with a powerful message from Pastor Kenny Shelton. And I just have to say that I appreciate Pastor Kenny Shelton so very much. As many of you know, he was with Mr. Danny as 3ABN started over 37 years ago. You know, and I've never asked him this question, but... I'm sure both of them have hammered many a nail here at 3ABN as they've constructed these buildings here. But you know, most importantly, Pastor Kenny, he's a man of the word. He's a man whose heart beats evangelism. He's a man who believes in preaching the undiluted three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14 and the entire Bible. But most importantly, he's a follower of Jesus Christ. You know, I appreciate he and, uh, and his wife, Sister Chris, they're the uh, speaker, director, president, whatever you want to call it, of, of Behold the Lamb Ministries. I asked him, I said, what do I call you? What's your title? He said, Greg, I do ev- everything, but most importantly, I follow Jesus Christ. I just appreciate their servant attitude, always willing to help. They're here at 3ABN, and many times I've had the opportunity of sitting under his tutelage. He's a man of wisdom. And the Lord has blessed them with incredible gifts and talents. We're so blessed that he's here going to be able to present this message to us today from the Word of God. But before he comes and shares, we're going to be blessed with music with uh, Tammy Chance, which is his sister, and of course Mr. Danny's sister, and Ryan Day. And they'll be doing a wonderful piece, more than wonderful. Thank you, Brother Tim. You're at the piano as well. God bless. a counselor a mighty God and the Prince of Peace he promised us that he would be a father and love us with a love that would not cease well I've tried him and found his promises are true he's everything he said that he would be the finest words i know could not begin to tell jesus just how much he really means to me Stand amazed when I think 
the King of glory. What can to dwell within the heart of man? And I marvel just to know he really loves me. When I think of who he is and who I am. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? More than wonderful. Praise God for that. I tell you, that just set my heart aglow to realize he is more than wonderful. Greetings again, 3ABN Camp Meeting. We're so glad that each and every one of you have tuned in. We're here today to study the Word of God together. And so I pray that you have, you know, you've brought your Bible and you have pencil and pens or whatever and take notes. Sometimes they tell me I go a little bit quickly, but hey, there's a lot to cover in the Word of God. We're going to be talking about prophecies unsealed, and we're going to talk about hope for the future. So if you're looking for what's going on in the world, you're looking and saying, I, I want to have hope for the future, uh, this would be the place to stay right now. But always before we uh, study, we, we, we pray. I know we, we prayed you know, back behind there on stage. Um, a lot of people have been praying, but I always like to just pray one more time because I feel like I, I really need it. So I'm going to kneel over here and pray, and I'd ask that you pray with me, please. Merciful Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you that we can call you our Father. Today we come before thee because we are in need, desperately, of a Savior. We're in need of heavenly wisdom. We pray for the outpouring of thy Holy Spirit. Lord, touch your people. Open hearts, open minds. Help us to realize the hour in which we live, that Jesus is soon to come, and we need to be ready. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Thank you, Lord, for each and one who's tuned in, each one who's watching. May this message be one that will touch every heart, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You have your Bible, just go ahead and get ready. We'll be turning to the book of Daniel. I'm going to read several verses there in just a moment. But you know, as we were praying and studying about what the Lord would have this to present, uh, this message came to, you know, I think the Holy Spirit brought this message to my mind and heart. Prophecies unsealed. And again, you talk about prophetic visions. You know, are we in need of people of, of visions? Do we need visions? Do we need prophecy? Do we need, you know, to know what's happening in the world? Do we really need to know what's going to happen so that we might be prepared? Well, if you do, again, we're going to be studying a little bit about that right now. And if you'll t take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 12. We're going to read a couple of, I think maybe five verses, if you just will, five verses that I believe that will be a blessing to you. Now, remember, these things are important. We're not up here just to waste time. We're up here to try to read revived by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit, that the hour that we're living in is a, is a fantastic hour in which I believe that everyone can play a part who wants to play a part in the finishing of the work. To me, it's an exciting time in which to live, and I pray this exciting time to each one of you today. Daniel chapter 12, listen carefully at every verse here. Again, five verses. We're going to begin with verse number three. 
Notice how it reads. It talks about here, it says there, and they that be wise. Is there anyone here that's wise today? Well, by the grace of God. If any be wise, notice this, they shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Verse 4, but thou, O Daniel, notice this, this is where we're going, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. The Bible says many shall run to and fro, knowledge shall be increased. Skip with me, please, to verse 9. Notice, it says, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are, notice this, what are, the words are closed up. Yeah, they're closed up until what? Till the time of the end. We're going to emphasize that over and over in our study. These words that we're talking about today, they were sealed for a time, but they were for the time of the end. And many of us believe we are in the end times right now, so that means they're for us. Verse 10 says here, many shall be purified and made white, tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. Notice this, none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Verse 13, last verse here, says, But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. It's just really something we should be talking about. You think about camp meeting, what a wonderful time camp meeting is, where God's people get together, where we study the word to God together, we we pray together, we we, we plead for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the, the latter rain experience. We plead to know what's taking place right now and what's soon to take place in our world. And some people say, well, I don't know if we ought to be, you know, this may be a little bit heavy-duty stuff. You know what? I really believe that it's time for heavy-duty stuff. You know, there's some that naturally on the milk of the Word. There's some who's on the meat of the Word. And praise God, 3 a.b. in camp meeting, I believe the Holy Spirit will give you what you need. We're getting, look, at Testimonies to Ministers. I love the little book, Testimonies to Ministers. It says this, page 115. Remember, prophecies unsealed and then hope. So all the time we talk about things, somebody will say, oh my, that's a little bit negative or maybe that's a little bit hurtful or whatever. There's hope at the end. There's hope that God gives us as we study these things and it tells us that God loves us. Testimonies to Measures 115, notice it says, Daniel stood in his lot. Do you remember the verse we just read there? Remember verse 13 of Daniel 12? Daniel stood in his lot or his portion or his, his destiny to bear his testimony, which was sealed until the time of the end. Man, sealed until what? To the time of the end. Notice this, when the first angel's message should be proclaimed. You know, 3 ABN, we are very interested, excited about what? The three angels' message. We need to hear, to, in my opinion, we need to hear more about the three angels' message. And I'm talking about all three. I'm not talking about just one or two. I'm talking about all three of the angels' message. Notice this. He said, when the first angels' message should be proclaimed to our world. Notice, the book of Daniel is unsealed, where? In the revelation to John and carries us forward to the last scenes of this earth's history. Now, just those last words It does something for me, at least in my mind and in my heart. It carries us forward to the last scenes of this earth's history. Is there anybody, anyone interested in the last scenes of earth's history? We are to teach these things. We're to bring them to light because we are in, and we'll say it over and over, in the scenes of this earth's history. The last scenes. Things are taking place right now that tell us that Jesus is soon to come. We may divide Daniel. There are people who love to study the, certainly the book of Daniel. And you could divide it into two different aspects if you want to, or divisions if you want. The historical part, which would be Daniel uh, you know, uh, 1 through 6, and the prophetic section, which is Daniel 7 through 12. So you can divide those things up, and it would be so interesting. Some of you haven't studied this. Many of you studied it much more than I have. And you know it well. But notice there in the prophetic section here, in, uh, starting with Daniel chapter 7, you, you, you find things like four beasts and little horn and judgment and, you know, the interpretation of it. All of a sudden, those things excite me. I don't know about you. That's exciting to say about if you don't know these things, to say, what, is, what are the four beasts? What is that, 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 that little horn? Uh, what's, is, there, is there a judgment? Is, is a judgment going on right now? If we need to be teaching and, and, and broadcasting to the world, it would be that the judgment hour has already certainly commenced. We are, you can say not at the beginning of it, we're at the end of it. That should perk us up in our spiritual seats to say, hey, we're at the end of the judgment hour. Jesus is coming. 
You know, you look at that, that, that's a second prophetic message. The third prophetic message that Daniel gives is Daniel 8 and 9. And again, you read and you say, oh, there's a ram, there's a he goat, there's, there's a horn, there's a cleansing of the, of the sanctuary. What does that all mean? You know, I'm finding more and more that you mention some of these things that people maybe have never heard before. And they just say, oh, well, oh, my, my, don't let that come back to bite you. This is something that should be very in- of interest to all of us today. The fourth prophetic message, and that, that would be Daniel uh, 10, 11, and 12, it also envisions, it's talking about things that's going to happen in the future and certainly historical things. So I'm excited about all of those things, and I hope you are too today. A little book that I read quite often is Prophets and Kings. Now, this is something that we need to really pay attention to, listen carefully. Again, Prophets and Kings 547. Now, start out with the words. Notice this. As we near the close of this world history, the prophecies revealed by Daniel demand our special attention. Okay, if I could stop there and end it, none of us should have a complaint about what we're talking about today because, notice, at, we're at the end of close, the world's history. Prophecies recorded by Daniel demand what? Our special attention. As, why? As they relate to the very time in which we are living. You know, there's a world out there that's wanting and relating to things that are happening that they just don't understand. And God has given you that understanding. I believe that with all my heart. There are many who know. And we need not keep silent at this time. We need not, you know, just kind of uh, talk about things that we think that might be pleasing and, and whitewash different things, but say it as God has given it to us as a body, as a church, as an individual. Remember, they relate to the time in which we are living. With them, and you notice that they, you know this, that we have to link the book of Revelation, Daniel and Revelation right now in the New Testament scriptures. But I might just add, I believe that the enemy has deceived now, we, no, none of us want to hear that because every one of us, we say, well, have you been deceived? Most of us, well, no, I've not been deceived. Well I, well, I can't be deceived because I know, because I've, you know, I've experienced. But pay special attention because the, the enemy brings out, you know, one thing he's going to do, uh, the scriptures bring out, is that he's going to deceive the whole world. Huh. He's going to deceive those, those names who are not written in the Lamb's book of life. So majority of the world right, is going to be deceived by what the enemy does. We need to pay close attention. What's going on? Most of the pastors in the pulpit nowadays, maybe some in our own, well, let's not really study the book of Daniel. Let's not really study the book of Revelation. It's a little bit too hard to understand. You can't understand it. It's just the opposite. It's just the opposite. For a blessing will come, the Bible says, a blessing will come to those who what, study them. We just read, uh, what was it, Daniel 12, verse 10. There's a blessing. You know what? I need those blessings. I want those blessings. In fact, it says there in, in Daniel 12, 10, it says the wise shall understand. The wise, that means it's going to bring hope to a world that seems to be crushing right under the weight of sin and problems that are going on, too numerous to mention. We might mention a few things that are going on before this ends, but notice there, this brings hope and encouragement that God said that which is sealed is going to be open so that my people will know, so they will not be deceived, so they can give the message of warning to the world. Are we doing it the way God would have us do it? Well, I, I pray that each one of us are doing as God has instructed us to do. You see, these visions were given to Daniel. You know, anytime I hear there was a vision, you know, in Scripture, John was in vision, you know, or whatever it might be, or Daniel was in vision, I pay close attention. How about you? A vision. That means heaven is what is talking, as it were, uh, to, to man. He's given him a message, and then man is to relate that message to each one of us. Write it down. But it says in that latter days, Revelation is a the revealing of Jesus Christ, there's no doubt about it. And I'm trying to figure out why it is many encourage them, people not to read the book of Revelation. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's to guide his people. Revelation said it's to show his servants of the things that must shortly come to pass. That's why the devil says stay out of it. Don't get into it. Because God said I'm going to show my people those things that are shortly going to come to, going to, come to pass. Revelation 1.1. And so then a blessing then is pronounced on number, notice that, one who reads. 
You know, sometimes we're not reading enough. We're not studying the, the Bible. Some people say, well, I read, I read, I read. I encourage you to study, study, study. Is that all right? Just study the Word of God. Find you a subject. Get in. Get to the bottom of it. Look what all the Bible writers have to say on this given subject. You know, study to show yourself approved unto God. It says here, we, he that reads and they that hear the words of prophecy. And then you've got those who keep those things which are written therein why for the time is at hand so i see three things are very important there and i know you do too you got we must read we need to hear it and then we need to keep those things that are written why because the time is at hand praise god for that you know and and again let let me just bring this out then you can chew on it for a little while if you don't like it you can always spit it out i mean we can always do that you know no man can can impart or give to someone else that which he has not received. How can you give something that you have not received? How are you going to, when the Holy Spirit impresses you, you know, something you, needs to be said, oh, you never put it in here, so it's not going to be able to come out. We have to hide the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds. We live in that hour of earth's history where God is going to use those who want to be used, those who have prepared to be used, those who have gotten rid of sin, is he out of their life and you know, all the problems of this world and they're concentrating on getting this message to go to the whole world. Isn't it interesting when you read the Word of God? You can know, check it out, you can know what has been. You can know what's going on and you can know what's soon to come. See, that brings courage. That brings me hope. We're telling camp meeting time, which we need more faith. We need more assurance We need to know who's in charge, and we need to know who's sitting on the throne and who's trying to take the position of of God. And we need to do that. There's a lot of things that we need to know what's going on here. We have some glorious, glorious truths that I've been studying from the Word of God that are specifically for the last days. And again, I'm going to mention last days. I love to mention the last days because why moan and groan and carry on and say, well, you know, the the promise of His coming was here and blah, blah. Listen. It's one day closer to the coming of Jesus right now. You don't know how long you're going to last. I don't know how long I'm going to last. The Bible said that knowledge will increase. Men will run to and fro. Let me just give you an example here. Uh, George uh, Reisman, he, he writes in a book, and he a book, it's, it's, it's 30 years ago, so keep that in mind as we read a few things that he put down. And he was referring to the signs of the times, basically, how the world has been advancing in technology and so on and so forth. Uh, he's, a, he, he's a professor, I think, at Pepperdine University. He's an author. He writes about the industrialized civilization. He says that live on a level far exceeding that of kings, notice that, and emperors. In all previous ages, he writes, on a level that just a few generations ago would have regarded as, huh, it's impossible. It had only been possible through, he says, through science or sci-fi. Do you ever do that? Maybe 15, 20, 30 years ago, you thought, oh my, that's like sci-fi stuff they're talking about. Technology, knowledge will increase as we go. And he just brings up simple things like a, a drive, driving a car, turning a key. You know, all of these things here that, you know, it, it takes a pretty good side, brain, I think, to put all these things together, absolutely. He said they're just wonderful machines like an automobile, but we, we take them for granted. You turn a light switch on, a light comes on. You know, which is in total darkness. You touch of a, of a button. What we watch, events that are taking place around the world. You can watch 3 ABN around the world. Flip a switch. Somebody needs to do what? Flip a switch. It's time to turn it on. This is time not to slow down, but flip a switch. Turn on 3 ABN. You know, you can get it to tens of thousands of miles away around the earth. The touch of a, a few buttons is you can talk to other people across town, across the world. You fly in an airplane, man, you just hear there at the hundreds of miles, you know, per hour. You can go up 40,000 feet, and what are you doing? Man, you got air conditioning, you got goodies and movies or whatever it might be to watch. This man looks at these things. He said, man, something's happening in the world. And he says, in the United States, notice this, most people have all of this. They have spacious homes. My. And he talks about all the goodies that are in the home and so on and so forth here. He said they have good, maybe good health. You know, it's a good thing, he said. And this is all as a result of a 40-hour work week. Interesting. Knowledge shall increase. And we realize within the last 100 years, what, more things have happened than have happened in the, since the beginning of time. Man, that, that's, that should be such a sign to say, when I realize, I know that Jesus is coming. The words of the angel, you know, to, uh, to Daniel. 
You know, praise God for these messages. You know, he said, remember, men shall run to and fro. But notice how it said, the wicked, wicked won't understand, but the wise. Now, I ask you, again, is there anybody that says, okay, by, remember, by the grace of God, spiritual things are what? Spiritually discerned. God says here the wise will understand what's taking place in the world. So maybe if you don't understand it, we don't understand prophecy, we're not studying it, oh, it may not be wise. We can understand and know what's going on, Daniel 12 tells us. Uh, Jesus even says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, he puts it so simple like this. He said, whoso readeth, let him understand. Whoso readeth, let him understand. So that means we need to be reading, right? Hearing and studying and so on and so forth. But, you know, to confess that we don't know something is all right. Uh, I spend most of my time like that. Oh, I didn't know. It's okay to do that. It's, it's not a disgrace. But to make no effort to escape it is inexcusable. There's things out there for us. God has given us things that we can understand. He's given us under, It's a guarantee that he gives us. If you read it, you're going to understand it. For those who study diligently, those who want to know, those who want to really get to the Word of God, spend some time, they can understand Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7, the three angels' message. My, it's exciting when you read there'll be a great religious awakening that takes place. You know, the first angel's message. It's given with a loud voice. Oh, yeah, we go over it a lot, but we need to be going over it. It's a warning to those who dwell on the earth. What better place than a camp meeting of time to say, hey, God's given us another warning. He's given us another camp meeting that we can come together. He's going to give us food for thought through the power of the Holy Spirit that will encourage us. It could be the last, and maybe not. But we need to be ready. Don't you think in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. The message is to go into all the world. It's to, it encircles the whole world. It's a movement that's going on. You have the privilege to be part of a, of a movement, not a one man over here and somebody else over here, but of a movement that God has given. A message helps us understand when this movement was to, is to take place, is taking place. It's a part of the everlasting gospel. It's an encouragement. It's the it's opening of the judgment hour. Man, part of the gospel. If we ever need anything in this world today, it's more gospel, isn't it? Gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what? The real gospel and that things are taking place could only be given, Daniel said, at the end of time, in the last moments of earth's history, during the time of the judgment hour. Daniel was told to close up and to seal. Notice this. Not all the book of Daniel, but part of the book of Daniel that, again, related to the last days. See, that to me, again, it's excitement. These things pertain to the last days. We believe we're in the last days. We believe we're in the end of time. Then we need to pay special attention. Remember Paul told it, remember his, the, the church at his time? He said, don't expect Christ to come, you know, in, in, in our time. It's going to be in the future, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. He says, except there come a falling away first that the man of what? That the man of sin, oh my, will be revealed. How many really are revealing or uncovering or discovering or, you know, making known who the man of sin is? Oh, no, not a pleasing subject at all to a lot of people. I kind of like to talk about it myself because God gives it in his word. If God gives it in his word, the spirit of prophecy is clear on it. I believe it's something that we should be able to be able to give to the world as a warning. Don't let man of sin be revealed. In other words, at a certain time, the man of sin is going to be revealed. You're going to know who it is. Huh. But not until after the great apostasy. There's many who say, well, there's no apostasy going on. Don't fool yourself. Man, we live all around apostasy. It's, 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 it's in front of us. It's behind us. It's all around us. And yet sometimes we choose to ignore that it's there. We don't want to disagree with somebody in a, maybe in a certain position, whatever it might be. There's apostasy all around us. We have to be very careful to know the Word of God. But the apostasy he's talking about here was in the 12, 1,260 years or the Dark Ages. He said this great apostasy, 1,260 years, 538 to 1798, the time of the end. He said, don't look for the coming of Jesus until some of these things are revealed. Now, if you know me very well at all, I, I don't like to leave us guessing. Let's not leave no doubt here to what's being said. 
When it says that the man of sin. Now, listen, if the Bible says the man of sin, I want to know who it is. Huh. How about you, the man of sin? Well, it could be, the Bible said we've all sinned and come short. This is a specific man. Do you notice this? He talks about the mystery of iniquity. He talks about the, the, the son of perdition. Wow. These are words here that cause you to think. So I want to know what the man of sin, that, you know what that means? When you, when you read it in context here, when it says the man, it means a, a definite man. Did you get it? A definite man. Or a man, notice this, a, a, or a power, and it talks about one of sin, is lawlessness. There'd be a man of sin, a man of lawlessness that would come on the scene. And he's called the mystery of iniquity. He's the son of perdition or the son of destruction. If we know a power like that is on the scene and it's working in the world today and it, it's just tearing the churches apart and causing people to go, in, live in apostasy and they don't know what truth is, surely we'll want to know who this power is. The wicked, you know. I mean, we know as we study that I and mean, we may not, you know, hide around a bush about it. We realize that's a, that's a papacy. There's no doubt about it. You know, again, to me, that's not discouraging news at all. That's good news that we understand it. Because maybe millions might be saved in the kingdom, where otherwise, if they don't hear this, they'll be lost. Remember, the whole world follows, wonders after the beast. They are those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. God said in these last days, and can you see it? I know that you can see it by the world that you're living in right now. People are going in so many different directions. They want to go in every direction except maybe for what is truth. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? They want fables instead of the truth of God's word. They want to close their ears to what is truth. You remember 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3? Oh, yeah, you've read it many times, but again, it's still true. We still need to look at it. We still need to weigh it in with the evidences that God has given us today. It said there'll be seducing spirits and what? Good. Doctrines of devils. Wow. Huh. There'll be a people who will, listen, I'm, have no conscience. You see the things that are going on in the world today? It's like people don't have a conscience. Is that true or is it not? It's like, yeah, they, don't, they don't have a conscience. They're just doing all kinds of things. They just drive by and just shoot somebody and it's no big deal. And you hear them on the news a lot of times and say, they, the man committed this or what it's kind of crime. And it's like, what's well, no big deal? Conscience is seared with a hot iron. Why? Seducing spirits and doctors of devils, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. It says there'll come a time that they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, if we're not there, we may never get there. They don't want to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it. John says in 1 John 2, 18, notice this, what he said. <laughs> at that time, it said many, already at his time, many antichrists have already come. Yet, we don't want to talk about antichrist. We don't try to identify anything that's antichrist. We don't want to identify apostasy. We don't want to identify shortcomings that may be in our own life or maybe in the church. We don't want to identify things that maybe we're following after the world, you see. We just don't want to do that. We want everything to run smooth. Let me tell you, it's not running smooth because when the devil's involved with it, it's not going to be smooth. It's going to be bumpy. It's going to be jerky. There's going to be a lot of headaches going on here till we get it right with God. Beware of those false prophets. I'll tell you what, false prophet is simply to me be one who gets in the pulpit preaching air. And a lot of times we go and we listen to air. By grace of God, I'm not going to listen to any air. You can, people can say what they want to say. You know, take a stand wherever you want to stand on it, but I'm not going to listen to air. As soon as I detect air, at least in my poor little mind, I detect it, that's it. my ears are shut. And I get up and leave. I'm not listening to air. I have a difficult time enough by the grace of God trying to figure out what truth is, not mess myself all up. Beware of false prophets, Matthew 7, 15. And also you can find that 24, 24. The Bible is clear. A spiritual rebellion is going on in the world today. Did you get it? A spiritual rebellion. We have to be able to see these things. Let's not become so infatuated with the world, which it seems like we are, that we begin to see through the world's eyes. God forbid that we see through the world's eyes. But yet we spend so much time with the world and worldly people that we're seeing through those eyes. And when you want something spiritual, it's like, oh, I can't comprehend it. Why? The Bible's already said that. Why? The, the, you know, the one, wicked, they're not going to understand it. But the wise will. The prophecy concerning the falling away was certainly partially fulfilled in the days of Paul. Partially fulfilled in the dark ages. But my brothers and sisters, it's going to be completely 
fulfilled just before Jesus comes. I hope you're looking forward to that. Hope for the future. Hope to be able to come together. You know, since it, when is it can we, you know, as a people that we can't come to? I hear people saying all the time about, well, let's sit down and have a conversation. Well, I hope the conversation is worth having. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about some of the things. But you have to be careful what you're talking about and spending time on today. We could be talking about things that just doesn't have any appeal for what we're doing and getting this message to the whole world. Paul said there'd be an arrogant power that would come up in the world. He wants all the worship to himself. Huh. Surely we can be in no doubt. We can identify, and we need to be studying to make sure we can identify by the grace of God these powers and then put it out there so people will be able to make good, intelligent decisions. Do we really realize these are life and death issues? These are life and death issues that we talk about, that we plead with, that we feel that they need to be brought out, and sometimes it's like it doesn't really matter. I thought about it time and time again. I see it. I, uh, you know, I, I, I looked at, uh, before, before I left the house, maybe peel, maybe it won't, but the house, I, I have a portrait of, of my mother and my stepdad there, you know, right by my desk, and I just walked up close to it, and I, I just looked at it. And I said, you know, by God's grace, I want to see them again. But their life record is, is closed. They're in the grave. They're waiting for Jesus to come. The sentence is passed. As it, but you have an opportunity today, if you're still alive and kicking, to make right choices or decisions. And I pray that you're making that decisions right now. There's a lot of things that will be brought to light before Jesus comes. They're going to be revealed. This becomes clear in the, in, in the book of Revelation, certainly the book of Daniel. You know, we talk about the, the powers that be and the world and what's going to happen and what's taking place in the world. I just wonder if we are, by God's grace, really realizing what is mounting up. I mean, I just throw this out to you. There's so many things that are happening in the world today. Some people don't want to talk about them. But remember, they're all building up for what we realize is going to be the end times and what's set soon to take place with Sunday laws. Can we mention that? Sure. You say, well, this is, there's so many events that are taking place, but the devil just has one plan. And all these things he might use if he can to bring them around so he can put God's people in a place and get rid of them. So we need to look them over carefully. Revelation 17, 3. Read Revelation 17 chapter, all that you can. Read that whole chapter. Study it out and you'll see. This is not just like, well, it's just going to be a bad day. See, some of us act like we're going through things now. It's just going to be a bad day. It's not going to be too bad. It ain't going to last very long. Hey, we're going through it. We're talking about a horrible time that's coming upon this world. As the Holy Spirit is being withdrawn, we need a relationship with Christ. Maybe that some of us don't have right now. And if you don't have that, why not? Why not during camp meeting time? Why not right now get on your knees and ask the Holy Spirit to come in? Say, I need hope for the future. As I look at things happening in the world, I, I don't see any hope, but I know with Jesus there's going to be hope. We need that time alone with God. The enemy says, you know, I'm going to use spiritualism. I'm going to use the, the beast. I'm going to use the false prophet. And you say that to people. You know what they say a lot of times? Is, I, I don't know what the, all that means. Can we just mention just a few things and maybe just a reminder? Remember, the devil's just not out and out. Just co will confront you and say this is, he is a deceiver. He's a smokescreen artist. He's a whitewasher. And he'll deceive you in so many different ways and bring you to the point where he wants you to be. And so he uses powers and he uses all kinds of different people to try to get done what he wants to get done. The Bible says, you know, in Revelation 16, talk about the spirits of devils, demons. Unclean spirits are going to be rampant in the world working miracles. How will you fare with that? Will you understand them? Will you know who's really working these things? Only through the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit can we know. Three evil spirits. Number one is spiritualism. May I just please mention that? It might upset some, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Spiritualism. You know, 
we, we've been set up for this for a long time going on. In the 50s and the 60s, you realize a lot of this uh, evil spirits, uh, uh, things like uh, Casper the Ghost and Harry Potter and TV like Bewitched and Charmed and Sabrina, and it goes on and on and on. The enemy is getting us ready for deception through these things. Now, could, may I go a little bit closer to home if it's all right? A little bit closer to home. Some of you maybe will disagree, but I notice this. Sometimes we have to beware of, beware of those things that are right in front of our nose that could lead us in a wrong direction, and yet they've kind of got a connotations of, 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 of a spirit, you know, sweet spirit, Holy Spirit. Oh, I just want to bring out some things. I, I found some things that are very disturbing, and I may be the only one, and if you do, please forgive me if you don't see it as such. Spiritualism, it's always all over here. But what if spiritualism, you know, I've looked and studied you know, a, a contemplative prayer. I found that a little bit disturbing. Spiritual formation, I found a little bit disturbing. Centering down, seances, centering prayer, hypnotism, mind emptying, all of this kind of stuff that kind of calls for the mind to be emptied and let whatever spirit come in, huh? The enemy has been setting up for a long time. And certainly this has three three. Uh, powers here the beast revelation 13 with the papacy false prophet second beast of revelation 13 you know that 11 through 17 apostate protestantism united states and bible prophecy sometimes you just don't hear a whole lot about united states and bible prophecy why not the greatest country in the world that makes an image to the beast. Well, we don't want to talk about the image to the beast because it might upset somebody. We don't want to talk about our country. Let me tell you, this country, United States of America, is going to pay a price because God has been so good to us over the years and given us so much. And we have spurned him and asked him to leave, as it were. Hmm. You know, during a brief period of time, we realize that the nations are going to come together. Let me just throw out some scenarios to you. We're going to talk about maybe a time to come when probation is, is closed. Huh. God, I believe, will permit a worldwide religious political union to form. Their objective, may I just be really honest, is to kill the people of God. That's the whole objective of this. Remember, what was started in heaven was brought down here, and he's going to continue that work. We need to understand that. If we can see it in the total picture here, we can understand what his plan was and what it continues to be right up until the end of time is to get rid of those who love Jesus and keep his commandments. It's very clear. Revelation 17, 17, the Bible says, For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So there will be a, not another world and one world power we're talking about here, but for a very short period of time, there's going to be a coming together, the ten horns, ten nations that come together. We need to be very well aware of that. And it's all against the people of God. Carrying out his purpose, his degrees. Huh, interesting. To execute sentence we've been talking about against religious side of the union. Huh. Revelation 19, 2 says, notice this carefully. For true and righteous are his judgments. Oh, which is to corrupt the earth with her, notice this, the fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Man, there's a time that's coming on this world. We're going to need some power certainly outside of ourselves. We're going to need hope and we need encouragement and we need it today, but we need to know what's happening. We need to know why God has put prophecy in the Bible. Why we read the books of Daniel and Revelation? Because God left them for us because he wants us to study them, because he wants us to know these things. He wants us to tell the world. He wants us to warn the world of these things that are taking place. But somehow we choose to do the, the sugar stuff, the light stuff, the stuff that's easy. No one gets upset. Everybody goes home happy. I want to agitate. Is that okay? I want to agitate by the grace of God in a good way. You are thinking and my thinking of what's coming on this world. And we will wish today, we was, I wish I had paid attention. I wish I had listened. Where's all this heading? It's got to be, where is all this heading that's happening in the world today? So much takes place every day that just it's too much to, to try to, to sort out. It takes a while to sort it out. Let me again just throw out, if you don't mind, just another thought as we see the changes taking place in the world today. You know, 
Are they or are they not affecting our religious liberty? Will they affect our religious liberty? Will they affect our free freedom of speech, you know, free conscience? Absolutely, they are today. They are right now. Our country's faced with a gigantic war on free speech and liberty of conscience. You say, my, why, what well, should we be concerned about? Absolutely. If the enemy can get you to hush up, not be passing out the books, not be giving the warning message, you see. And, 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 and if when you do, it's called a hate crime. If he can get you to do that, you, you can't get it out. You can't warn the world. People are going to be lost. We need to do it while there's still day because night comes and no man can work. So don't let one opportunity go by, right, and just say, well, we'll, do, we'll talk about this another day. Already, what's going on in the world is transforming our society. It has changed drastically since COVID, as you well know. Many are afraid, even right now, to exchange information and ideas. They're afraid of them, huh? which is needed in a free society. If you live in a free society, you should be able to exchange things without, you know, oh boy. You know, it's kind of like when you throw something out there and somebody doesn't like it, it's almost like there's a boa constrictor has wrapped himself around you and every time you take a breath, it gets tighter and tighter. He wants to end our liberties. There's censorship. It's spreading all over the place. Don't you see where it's headed? Censorship, what? So you have to be careful what you read in the, in the book of Revelation, in the Bible, in the Word of God. The devil's trying to cut it out where you can't do that anymore. Huh. If someone, for instance, has a different view than yours, huh, it's very common to hear a real quick call to severe punishment. Well, they think different than we do, man, severe punishment. Let's get rid of them. Let's keep them quiet. Huh. Remember, I thought we lived in a country where we had this free speech and free conscience and be able to go to church and be able to exchange thoughts, but no, you're fooling yourself. These changes have already come about. We have to be very, very careful right now. You know, if someone thinks that you went too far in a speech, all right, you just had a speech or an article, an action, you know what they call immediately? They hear, this guy just made this an hour ago. All of a sudden, you got all kinds of people calling for resignation. Well, let's get rid of them. They shouldn't do this. Huh. Even more troubling, at least to me, is, um, you know, big companies and, and business. Now, remember, this all has to do to me with Bible prophecy and things that will lead, you see, to the image of the beast and the Sunday law. These things are all leading to it, taking away our liberties, taking away our, our free choice. And yet we stand by and we say nothing. God, help us. God, help us to be able to see that this is a time to blow the trumpet in Zion, to sound an alarm in, my, in the holy mountain. It's time for the people of God to wake up and say, man, may tomorrow I get up, I may not be able to say what I'm saying right now without what? Somebody coming to your door and arresting you and throwing you in jail. They don't even have to have a reason. They can just do it now. They might not leave you in jail for a long time. Don't have to impress any charges. Man, something's going on here. You see these big businesses and these big multi-billion dollar companies and these leaders they panic when something is supposedly said about them or any other issue. They're afraid of those who threaten them. And so they just quickly deliver some kind of a, a, a quick unrighteous punishment that doesn't, we say, fit the crime. Have you seen that? You see it all the time now. Oh, somebody said something. Man, let's re, 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 they need to resign. Let's get them out of here. They need to fire them. Get them somewhere else. We don't want to hear it anymore. You can't tell what you have on your heart and what you're in your mind that goes against the elite. You know, how bad, how bad is it? And again, only bringing this up because you look at how bad things are in the world should tell us that where we're at and what the enemy's doing. He's coming right around to get you. He's coming around to get me. We need to do what we need to do quickly. You realize this, you know, there's articles all the time. The editor's are fired for writing about a controversial subject. All they do is just, that's, that's their job, but they write about a controversial subject. Oh, they get back, oh, because somebody says, well, they shouldn't talk about this. Books are rejected that people write, spend a lot of time on, because someone says, well, it's not authentic. They have all kinds of things that says that it is, but somebody else says it's not. Well, let's throw it out. Journalists who should have right, freedom to write, huh, they're told not to write on certain subjects. Don't ask certain questions. 
public doesn't need to know. That, can't you see where it's headed? Again, pointed back to the people of God. Eventually, notice, professors at colleges are called to you know, the carpet for quoting some of the literature that's been around for hundreds of years. Hmm. We can't do that anymore because somebody's going to get mad. Heads of organizations that make millions of dollars are fired for simple and honest, just a mistake. And they come back and they apologize, but it's not good enough. Can we not see, my brothers and sisters, that the boundaries of what can be said are narrowing down? That concerns me. It should concern us as Christians. Not because the world's doing this, I'm bringing this up. Because it should concern us as Christians today. Because I call it free speech. We are now living in an intolerant society. Hey, no different than the days of Christ, isn't that right? Intolerant. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to deal with it. We are too. And sometimes if you don't see that today, maybe you're, maybe you're not involved enough. Maybe you're not reading or seeing enough to realize that's exactly where this is heading. Intolerant side. We don't like what you're saying. We want you to be quiet. If you don't be quiet, then we're going to put you out of your, ooh, your misery. To be fearful, notice this, it's coming to the point that we become afraid to tell the truth. Now, is anybody home? We're almost afraid to tell what is truth or tell something that somebody disagrees with. Again, we may lose our jobs. We may, you know, lose our livelihood. When will it be that God's people dare to be different? I'm encouraging you, dare to be different. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to say what God has given this last day movement to get it out there while there's still time. Before probation closes. Man, that's right. dare to be different. You know, however innocent, listen carefully, however innocent some people may think, listen carefully, any, any, any attempt to regulate Religious practice by law is a violation of fundamental principle of religious liberty. Did you get it? And there's all kind of things out there now. This is only being said and brought so what we could just look at it objectively and say, what has God asked you to do? What has he asked me to do in these last days of earth's history? For the United States of America to take steps, if they take steps on what we've been talking about here, it's a complete reversal of the present policy. Huh. It's changing. Granting full freedom of religion to its citizens. That's what's been guaranteed supposedly to us. But we realize that every point of the Constitution will be repudiated. And it's already there. The lawyers already have a way to go around every point of it. So you don't have that. And I'm saying that for some of you who go, oh, we've got this and we've got that. We can count. You've got one thing you can count on. That's Jesus Christ. Another thing you can sure count on. Jesus said, I'm coming soon. Coming back after people that love him with all their heart, their soul, and their mind. They dare to be a Daniel, as we mentioned. They dare to stand for what is true. They dare to say, I want to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. They dare to take a stand when someone says, shut up and sit down. You dare to go ahead and stand up and tell what God has, has put on your heart to do. We don't want any kind of an attempt, and there's all kind of attempts now, that change the way that we think and the way we act. Huh. Five Testimonies 452 says this. We're winding down. Now, come on, stay with me. 5T 452. It is, now notice this. You'll say, well, I don't know what it is. Well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's time that we, 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 we get to know, okay? It is our duty to do all. Now, I didn't mean to agitate you, but I did get you thinking, right? 5T452. It is our duty to do all in our power to avert the threatening danger. We should endeavor to disarm prejudice by placing ourselves in a proper light before the people. Isn't that interesting? We should do what? All in our power to avert the threatening danger. What is a threatening danger? Religious liberty, freedom of speech, all these things that we're talking about. Things that are going on in the world. The devil began the work in heaven. He's down here doing it right now. It's always what? To get rid of God's people. Will you do what God has asked you to do? Will I do? Will I be faithful to the end? I've asked myself that many times and I say, you know, only by the grace of God. By the grace of God, we're going to be faithful until the very end. We have to bring things you know, in proper light to the people. Are you doing that? People need 
to know. And I'm going to stand on this. People need to know what's happening in the world. Prophecy reveal these things to us to get ready, to give us hope. We should bring maybe before the people more than we do the real issues of the, you know, of when people protest against measures to restrict religious liberty. We need to stand up. We need to make a noise louder than they're making right now. Because I believe this with all my heart. God has called us as a people to stand as, as, as a light in the world. God has given his people a, a work to do in the time of prosperity, in the time while we can do it. And listen, if we don't do it in the time that God has given us, we'll have to do it under very dark circumstances. But we're going to do it because God said that we're going to do it. 5T455 says that. The work will be done by them. Notice this. What? Notice. But in captivity, under great trial and embarrassment. Do you see what we're talking about here? It's much more. We're talking about there'll be those who go into captivity. They're going to be, what, thrown in jail, thrown in prison because of their belief. And most of us can't get that through our head. And we think, well, it's not really that important. Our message is life and death issue. Isn't it about time that we looked at it that way? It's life and death. God's called us. He's called, made a call to the churches. He's made a call to the world to come out and be separate and touch not the unclean. Are you willing to do that today? God has unsealed these prophecies. He's made it light. He's brought it forward. You hear the messages. We need to have ears to hear and then accept this and say, Oh, God, help me to fit where you would have me to fit. Reach the world. Give the three angels a message in Revelation 14. Daniel is standing in his lot. Where are you standing today? Where am I standing today when we look? Prophecies unsealed. Hope for the future. I'm encouraging you there's hope for the future. This is the time for God's people. You know these things now. Happy are ye if you do them. Though some of you are making decisions right now that you want to be on the winning side, and I'd like to pray for you in closing. Let's get ready, shall we? We pray together. I'm going to kneel one more time and pray that God will help you, will help me to make right choices and right decisions that we might be ready to meet Jesus when he shall come. Let's pray, shall we? Merciful God in heaven, we thank you for your precious word. We realize sometimes it's very straight, very forward. But, Lord, we're so thankful. That's the way you gave it. When you talk about the man of sin, you came out with these words. We didn't just make them up. And you said this is our job to give the first, the second, third angel's message, a warning against the mark of the beast, the image to the beast. And the whole world basically wanders after. Lord, help us, we pray. Use us, we pray, for your honor and for your glory. For those who have made that decision right now, I want to be on the winning side. Bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, it's been good to be with you. You know, love 3ABN camp meeting time, a time to get together, a time for the Holy Spirit to be pouring out in great abundance. And I pray today that you have made that choice and that decision. Why? People need to know that Jesus is coming soon. Don't soft pedal it. Don't throw it out. Just take a stand for what God would have you do. We love you. Appreciate you. We'll see you next time.